All right, our second voting rule is called runoff voting. And uh, again, this is another very highly used voting rule in reality. So there are two rounds, all right? Different than plurality, there's gonna be two rounds. In the first round, each citizen votes for one candidate. If a candidate gets a majority, you know, more than half of the votes, well, then this candidate wins. However, if nobody gets the majority, well, then the top two vote getters, all right, the top two candidates or the, you know, two candidates who gets, uh, you know, the most votes uh, is going to face each other in the second round, usually called runoff, which determines the winner, all right? So in the second round, again, the agents are going to vote for those, uh, you know, uh, you know, each citizen is going to vote for a candidate. And then this time, uh, because there's only two candidates, uh, the majority holder is going to get the, uh, I mean, is gonna be the winner. Okay, so that's exactly how this works. So let's apply this into our example. Well, don't forget, once again, uh, in our more general setup, we do not ask our citizens to vote for one candidate. Instead, we ask them to reveal their preferences, uh, uh, you know, truthfully, quote unquote. We ignore the strategic uh, interaction for now. And then we, we say, all right, three candidates, I'm sorry, three voters uh, prefer A to B, B to C and C to D. So if they were actually voting in a runoff voting, well, then they would be voting for A. Remember, we assume they do not vote strategically. We assume every, everybody votes their uh, uh, first best candidate, all right? And, and, and five uh, voters would vote for A, and then seven voters would vote for B, and then six voters for C. Well, is there any majority winner? Well, remember we have three plus five, eight, plus seven, 15, plus six, 21 voters. So what would be the majority, you know, more than uh, 50%. So it's like, uh, if you divide uh, 21 to two, you're gonna get, uh, you know, 10.5. So as long as uh, somebody receives more than or equal to 11 votes, is going to get the majority, but nobody gets 11 votes. So there's no majority winner. Well, in that, for that reason, in this uh, example, uh, the first round is not going to determine the outcome. The voting is gonna go to the second round, all right? So the first round, uh, no winner. However, what happens, only two candidates are going to move to the second round. So which two candidates? Well, the two candidates who get the most votes. Remember, A gets total of eight votes, B seven, C six, D zero. So therefore, only A and B are going to move to the second round, all right? Well, in the second round, again, in our theoretical setup, we do not need to ask the voters again how they would rank those alternatives because remember we I, I i'm going to keep repeating this again and again because it's very important uh we ignore strategic voting when we assume that this is the true preferences of the voters so therefore we don't really need to ask another time how they would rank the alternatives the only thing we need to do is just look at the same rankings but just ignoring C and D, all right? Well, as we see here, uh, three voters, those three voters rank A over B, meaning A is their top choice, and five of those guys vote A over B. I mean, they prefer A to B, so therefore they also vote for A. So A, uh, at least eight uh, voters. I don't know the others. Uh, we'll see about that. Those seven people have the same ranking and they prefer B to A, so they would go for B. So B receives seven, but then there's another six more voters. And again, we ignore C, right? In the second round, it's not one of the candidates. So the B is now the top choice for those six people. Uh, in comparison to A, it's better. So therefore they're gonna vote for B. 
All right, so they're going to vote, uh, I'm sorry, uh, B, I'm sorry, six more voters are going to vote for B, so therefore it's going to be 13. All right, so is there any uh, majority winner? Yes, it is the candidate B. So you know what? According to run of voting, all right, uh, outcome in example one is B. Okay, remember in plurality it was A because A gets the most votes, but it wasn't a majority. Well, if you choose a different rule, obviously the outcome may be different. Okay, well, this is what happens in example one. In example two, what happens? Well, in the first round, uh, you know, B is going to get eight votes, A is going to get five, D is going to get eight, C is going to get zero votes. So therefore, there's going to be no majority winner. Remember, we need to have 11, at least 11 votes. So therefore, the top two candidates are going to move to the second round. Who are they? In example two, the top two candidates are going to be B and D because both of them have eight votes. And remember, A has only five votes. So now in the second round, uh, those eight people prefer B to D. So B gets those eight voters. Um, those eight people prefer D to B. So D is going to get those eight voters. And then what about those five people? Well, if we ignore A and C, remember, they're not in the second round. Actually, they prefer D over B, so they would vote for D. So uh, D would actually get five more votes. So that means 13 votes goes for D. So therefore, the runoff voting outcome in the second example is going to be D. All right. Uh, obviously, if you change the uh, voters' preferences, the outcome can change. Uh, that's that's uh, very understandable. So this is how the runoff voting works. Um, I hope that was clear.